and we're pushing out to the car. Well, it's one of my favorite times, grocery haul time. And we filled this cart and didn't even spend $160. That's awesome. So guys, take a look at all the stuff in the back of the truck. This is just a teaser. I will go through this on the table later, but that price even included getting our laundry soap. So that's pretty awesome. Well guys, as I said, outside of no frills last night, yes, next day, it got too late for me to film this when we got home, but what a haul. I mean, to fill our table almost full and only spend, it was $166. I said at the tailgate there, I thought it was under 160, but it was $166.56. But we're gonna go through some of the items that I managed to get. The one thing I am finding is that if you look for the deals and you happen to be in the right place at the right time and you're buying the right stuff, boy oh boy, there are some good deals to be had. One of them I'm going to say, Cashy bars. These are such wonderful bars. The kids now they're in high school can take nuts to school and they're so much healthier for them than some of those other chocolate bars. So or they're not, well, chocolate bars too, but granola bars. Uh, but anyways, I'm not going to go into too much yet because we're going to go through this table and I'll show you and boy, oh boy, the produce was a great deal. I'm going to quickly go through the frozen stuff. By no means was it the best deal, but it was stuff that we stocked and I want to get it back into the freezer because oddly enough, we're middle of September and it's 27 degrees outside Celsius, of course. So the fruit always on for the same price at no frills. I believe, let me check my cheat sheet, 4.49 avocados, mangoes, tropical mix, basically stuff that we can't grow here or don't grow here. And it's stuff that we put into our smoothies. It's healthy food options. And eventually I'm going to go through some of that conversation, not in this particular video, but as we've been researching the diabetes and what food I should try and get into my diet every day, it's becoming challenging, I will say, but certainly having some of that stuff in frozen helps because sometimes you can't get through it fresh quite quick enough but those four were 449 and then we got a big thing of corn again not on sale but I want to make some fiesta corn relish because that's something that we really really enjoy for things like egg salad tuna salad all that sort of stuff and I am all out as you've seen like three or four times now in my pantry tours I don't have any more and I keep saying I'm going to make it and I buy the corn because we don't grow sweet corn and I use it for something else. So this bag is for Fiesta Corn Relish and that video will be coming up as soon as I get it done, which hopefully will be in the next week or two. Another thing that we really like to stockpile for winter season for sure is things like tea. Now, yes, we do put a lot of our own herbs and things like that into the dehydrator and store those to mix up our own teas and uh, concoctions and whatnot. But some things it is really nice to be able to pick up. And these were $1.88. So green tea is one of the ones that we use uh, in the mornings. We also make green tea and freeze it for our smoothies. Excellent way to get those nutrients in without having to have a hot drink. Raspberry Thriller, one of the kids' favorite nighttime ones. So I got one of those. Probably should have got more, but uh, well. Dirty Chai, this is a new discovery. I'm excited to try this. So one thing that we've kind of changed recently is not going coffee every morning. We're trying to do coffee one morning, tea the next. And that just gives us that opportunity to boost our immune systems, boost all those nutrients and things that are in it by having different teas and different mixtures all the time. So this dirty chai sounded very interesting. I'll read it to you. It really does sound good. So what's in this is black tea leaves, cinnamon bark, chicory root, ground coffee beans, natural flavor, which is basically a molasses, ginger root, and black pepper seeds. So I'm excited to try this. Again, it's got a little bit of sugar in there, but I'm not too worried about it. And it just gives us a little diversity in the morning, which I'm super excited about. And another one that they had, which we'd never seen before, and I have no idea how to say this, is Roibus, Roibus, Roibos, red tea. <laughs> and uh, this is a new one, no clue, but we hadn't seen it before and we thought, well, it's on sale. We're gonna pick one up and we're gonna give it a try. So that'll be interesting. I assume there's something different with a red tea compared to a black tea compared to a green tea. So having those mixtures, I think really, really will pay off uh, in getting us some diversity. So super excited to stock back up our tea shelf. 
uh, one of the things we're thinking with uh, the green teas and some of the black teas is to actually take them out of the tea bag, you know, the tea leaves, and just mix them into a whole bunch of stuff that we want to put into our tea, have it all in a pot so that you just have to scoop out and put into our tea balls. Anyways, we'll see if that happens. It's a, a work in progress, right? And sort of rounding out some of the stuff that we have on the front here, our nachos. We just got three bags. They were on for two fifty each, which is a pretty decent price. And we really like those President's Choice uh, small bite-sized round ones. Great for the kids for taking for school and taco salad. Then we got a couple um, spices at the front. I always pick up chili powder almost every time I go to the store because I go through chili powder like mad, and sometimes it's just not there. So always make sure I've got a good stash of chili powder. And kind of last on this little section is Parmesan cheese. This is actually a treat. We wouldn't normally buy it, but I'm making uh, a viewer or subscriber uh, suggestion for dinner tonight, and it called for Parmesan cheese, so we picked that up. Hopefully, if it's tasty, we'll get more than one meal out of that. And of course, you saw it when I pulled it out on the tailgate there, but the True Earth Laundry, what are they called? Strips. We switched to these, oh boy, it's probably a couple months ago now. And I have to admit, love them. They clean super well, no buildup or anything in the uh, washing machine. I find uh, I'm doing a little bit smaller loads maybe in order to make maximum use of them, but definitely better on our septic system. We're noticing it is so much better on our pipes and everything else. So worth the money for sure. And I feel it's a little bit more environmental. I will admit I've never actually looked at the ingredients to see, but it does say uh, par par paraben free and phosphate free. I will admit I've never been somebody that's super duper worried about those sorts of things. I know I should be, but it just never concerned me. But I do like the idea of being kinder to my septic system. <laughs> Lemon juice and lime juice in there. The lime juice, I actually need more than that, but it wasn't on sale. So I just picked up one for now. And the lemon juice, I am always looking to restock those because we use a lot during canning season. And I think I'm down to only about two jars in the pantry. So that was a smart buy. You already saw me pull out these granola bars. All sorts of good granola bars and cashew bars here for the kids for school. I will admit, I do like to make snacks most of the time for the kids. But sometimes when you're on the go and you're busy, especially right now during canning season, making cookies and things like that just isn't an option. Hopefully I can convince James and Alex to make some cookies for themselves, but it's nice to have these as a backup. And I have to admit, as I'm trying to improve how I'm eating as well, sometimes when you're on the go out the door, it's nicer to be able to grab one of these healthier chocolate bars or uh, granola bars or something like that than it is to uh, go out. Oh, I hear the kids coming in from school. They're gonna make noise. <laughs> Here they come. Far better for me to take one of these granola bars than it is for me to stop at something like Tim Hortons for a quick donut or muffin or something because I'm starving on the way, right? So I love having these on stock. I will admit, I even went back and bought four more of these because these are my favorite. Uh, and at $2.99, I think that was a dollar, I want to say it was a dollar 40 off, something like that anyways. It was significant. They're usually like $4, $4.50 a pack. So I thought I'm gonna stock up on these now and this will last a long time because I am starting to build up my resistance to snacking on those types of things. I've already gone over the spices. Oh, one thing I didn't talk about was what was at the very front here, the ginger. Now, this is something that we do grow here and it is not ready to harvest yet. And I will splice in a little clip of what it looks like so far on the porch. Hopefully we'll get enough this year to actually consume some, but what we're going to be using that for actually is our teas as well. We're going to grind that up and we're going to dehydrate it so that we can just put a little ginger in our teas in the wintertime. Ginger, honey, tea, mm, wonderful and great for fighting colds and things like that, along with the elderberries. Anyways, I've got a lot of ideas for some concoctions and I will definitely share them with you as we, uh, it's not, well, I guess it's mastering, but you know, trial and testing and seeing what actually we like and works well together. What else have we got before I get to the real big stuff? Dairy, one thing of milk. I am not going to my local dairy right now because our fridge broke, this one right behind me here. She's not working and we had a delay. So we're, our new fridge was supposed to get delivered on Monday and now it's not getting delivered till next Tuesday. So hopefully we don't get another call saying it's uh, not coming. We luckily have a second fridge downstairs, but it is full of stuff from the garden. So not stocking up on things like yogurt and all that too terribly much, which is why I had to buy yogurt. 
Uh, so that's why we got two of these so that we had them for smoothies, granola, things like that. So that's perfect. And speaking of granola, I hadn't been able to make my granola because I was waiting for a grocery haul video to buy oats. Five bags of large flake oats. They were on for $3 each. I almost could have done this for a stock at September with the uh, $15 every week. But I have something else planned for that, so definitely stay tuned. But it does involve these large flake oats. And really, besides those paper towels at the back, the only thing we have left to discuss on this grocery haul is all those big bags of produce and what we're going to do with those. So even though this isn't a pantry tour, you can see our store-bought pantry is filling up nicely. And with only a few more months till the pantry challenge, this is a good thing. And the big bulk of this grocery haul was produce. But now is the time to be packing produce away for the winter. It's at a good deal. $2.77 for 10 pounds. Beets, carrots, onions, potatoes were even cheaper, but we grow a lot of potatoes. But one thing you'll know from some of the past videos here is that we've really upped our beet eating content. We also suck at growing onions and carrots. So that is why we're stocking these items. In the end, we got 20 pounds of carrots, 20 pounds of onions, and 30 pounds of beets. And the funny thing about the beets is just two days prior, we bought five pound bags of beets for twice the price. So we actually have 40 pounds of beets to tuck away. And now we're gonna show you how we store those items away for the winter months. So to store these, we're going to use some plastic totes. The big one's gonna be for beets and the small one's gonna be for carrots. And all we're going to do is place alternating layers of wood shavings, as you see behind there, and the produce. And they will keep pretty well like this. Now, are they gonna last until next spring? Probably not. And with this method, you're gonna to wanna to check and see how are they keeping in there? How, how well are they storing? And remove stuff that uh, maybe goes bad, etc. But we've done this before and uh, it works pretty well. This method also works really well for other root vegetables like rutabagas, for example. And if you do want to get ambitious and store sort of these root vegetables that are biannuals over winter to plant out to get seed the next year, this also works as a viable method. We've done it in the past with uh, sugar beets. So you can see here, we start out with about an inch layer of those wood chips or wood shavings on the bottom. In go our beets. One thing that you definitely wanna make sure is that they aren't touching each other. I know it seems like a waste of space, but trust me, they will store a lot better if they can't condensate on each other. Really what the shavings are doing is helping to keep the beets moist and not lose too much moisture, while at the same time keeping them dry enough that they don't rot. So you're kind of keeping them in stasis for lack of a better way to put it. And you do want to keep them in a cool location uh, we're keeping them in the basement and in all fairness right now it's a little warmer down here than we'd like because it's been a really warm September but we do find that this basement and especially down near the floor where it's coolest they will keep for quite a while. So you can see here we're following the same method with the carrots laying them out not touching we've got an inch on the bottom. So some people do use sand for this exact same method and it certainly does work. The one thing we find is the sand is heavy. So moving those buckets around after you've got them all filled is a bit of a chore. And we are able to use these shavings again as mulch in the garden every spring, just dump them out and it's great for around trees and things like that. So at least we don't have any wasted product. Not that sand would be a wasted product. I'm sure we could find some kind of use for it, but the shavings work great for us. The other thing that I should also mention as you're doing this is you wanna make sure that your vegetables or root vegetables are in a very good quality. Now what I have here is a carrot and you can see the end is taken off of that. And that is one that would not make the cut to go into these boxes because this is gonna rot and spoil a lot faster than those ones that are still contained completely in their peel. So you definitely wanna watch that. Even with the beets, same thing. If there's a cut out of it or if they've taken the uh, the end off down too low, you really want to make sure that those aren't the ones that are going into the uh, storage. You want to use those up first. So here we are with our buckets all filled. You can see we've got room definitely for some more carrots, probably at least another 10 pound bag, if not more, and probably one more bag of beets, I would say. But I wanted to show this too, because we have a few beets that were in the bags that obviously won't keep. They've either got some damage on them, whether that's from harvesting or insects. 
So we put these off to the side to use them up first because we don't want those spoiling over the storage period. And last but not least is onions, which we don't do anything with. Just keep them off of the floor down here, up in these nice airy bags. They, realistically, they don't last that long anyways, so these will probably be consumed before the end of the year. And as you can see, the pantry, well, store-bought pantry at least, is getting well stocked. We are going to be so ready for that pantry challenge this January, so definitely stay tuned to see how we go with that. But I hope you enjoyed this grocery haul and a little bit of an educational lesson on storage at the end. And stay tuned as we keep going this weekend with a whole bunch more great content.